Shipmates, Sino Gilday here. Three weeks ago, I asked you to listen. Now, I am strongly encouraging every Navy leader, uniform and civilian, active and reserve, to start a dialogue at each of your commands. As a Navy, we must seize this opportunity to engage in conversations about race relations and inclusion within our force. Now is the time to have open and honest conversations across our Navy. Each of us should be thinking about how we can contribute in a positive way and what we can do to better our Navy. It starts with each of us. Each of us brings our own experiences to the table, our own backgrounds, beliefs, hardships, and hopes for the future. One thing I know we all have in common is, a, is the hope for a future that is equitable and fair for all. Right now, we should be having conversations about how we can achieve this within our own work centers, our commands, and across the fleet. As leaders, now more than ever, it's our turn to listen. Let's come together in open, honest, and respectful dialogue. To start that conversation, I'd like to share some personal experiences from a few of our shipmates. These recent events, especially with the last one of George Floyd, I can honestly say I was angered. I'm still angered. And I'm saddened at the same time. I'm 44 years old. The first time I experienced racism when I was 10 years old. And to be honest, I still experience it to this day. Being um, African American in America is not fun. It's every day looking over your shoulder, every day trying to minimize your personality or minimize what people think is a norm. So there shouldn't be a norm as to how people should act, definitely not based on their color. I am a human being, I have rights, and I serve my country so that the people that look like me and everyone else has the right to be just who they are, without judgment and with freedom. I've certainly become very aware of my own privilege as a white person, and I affirm my commitment to my peers and my community to continue to listen, as the CNO said, to educate myself and to really learn about how this country has a history of systemic racism and how that has affected us all the way through to this day. And I believe that only through really learning and educating ourselves and seeking to understand the experiences of marginalized people, that's the only way that we'll be able to move forward as a country and try to create a community that's more equitable, fair, and just for everyone who lives in it. Oh, and the fact that a lot of African Americans, we know what we face, because face it, you know, a lot of us, if not all of us, got to work 10 times harder than our colleagues just to show that we belong and that we can do this and we deserve to be here um, for personal experience and it we can't even help each other through the way we feel because it's understood it's even taboo to even talk about it we never talk to each other we just understand that we always always have to work harder than our colleagues to be seen to be to be recognized to feel valued. Um, it's always hard. And, and you know, we deal with it. Uh, when I first saw the video of George Floyd's murder, I was infuriated and truthfully, I questioned my place in society and in our Navy. Uh, since that time, I've talked with a number of my fellow sailors and civilians, uh, officer and enlisted, white and black. I already knew I had personally experienced systemic racism and implicit bias uh, during my time in the Navy. But those conversations that I had made it clear that these are harms that have impacted sailors throughout our entire force. While I think it's a daunting task, um, I think we have to take decisive action and address these issues. If I'm hurting next to you, I should be able to be comfortable to come talk to you and express how I feel and the issues that I'm going through outside the Navy. We all work together. The least you can I can I should feel comfortable in coming to you and talking to you and we finding knowing that you have my back or you're there you're there with me. Um, that you can feel the same pains I'm going through. That's how we could move forward. 
if we all come together and talk and explain exactly what's going on and address the issue head on. And I think that us being able to have these conversations, us being able to basically come together to figure out what what we can do to make a difference is a really big deal for us as a military and I really hope that something comes of it. It's not just a conversation that people are having because of the climate and they think, oh well we should just talk about it just so that people can feel better. I think action should come from it and I really hope that that's what comes from this. Because as simple as it sounds, it is relieving that we're having the opportunity to express frustrations that have been bottled up for years, not just being in the military, but also just growing to be an, an adult. And you just listening, um, as we've just recently had our own all hands call, um, it allows you to just be able to, what can I say, um, relate and not to say that we're asking you to understand, we're just asking you to empathize of what is currently going on and just giving us that ear is enough. That's a start. As a 24-7 sailor, so many people feel that they're anxious about how we can express our opinions and how we can stand up for change for things that may mean so much to us without interfering with political conflicts or any domestic policies. But racism deserves no neutrality. We need more done, and the superficial programs that we have in the military aren't doing a lot for the minority, and they still feel underappreciated, undervalued. And we need change. Tomorrow's Navy will stand on the right side of history when we finally realize that Black Lives Matter. The only voice that our Navy needs to hear is not one of words, but a broken silence of action which requires our leaders to exemplify what it means to care, display kindness and concern for others. You saw George Floyd getting killed, and I saw my husband. You saw how Ahmaud Arbery was gunned down in the middle of the street. I saw my three sons. You heard about Breonna Taylor being shot while sleeping in her home, multiple gunshot wounds. I heard it could have been me. Those black lives, like my black life, matters. First, find your own position, make sure it's a good one, and then have an intelligent conversation about it. Don't lose this. Thank you. I mean, what can we talk about? Well, I say we take it from a humanity piece. You know, it's okay for you not to have walked in my shoes or me walk in yours. Uh, what's not okay for me not to matter? What's not okay? Uh, for the color of my skin or where I'm from uh, prevent you from valuing me for my self-worth. Racism is a, a cancer that if you are a black person, it, it, it stays in your mind and it affects your everyday thought process, your everyday, um, whatever it is that you want to do, it affects that. Um, this uniform is amazing. To serve in our military is amazing. It's, it's a privilege. Um, but when I go home at night and I have to take this uniform off, I'm a black man in America. Whatever that means. To be clear, as sailors and as a Navy, we cannot tolerate discrimination or racism of any kind. We must work to identify and eliminate individual and systemic racism within our force. We are beginning that work now, examining our policies, ranging from recruiting and assignments, advancements and promotions, to our military justice system and other policies. That is why we are standing up a task force designed to identify and remove racial barriers and improve inclusion within our Navy. We must demand of each other that we treat everyone with dignity and respect. If you won't do that, then our Navy is not the best place for you. We are one team and we are one Navy.